let's go over some packages that we received. I already have a few of them open, but I want to go over them. And we're going to have another batch coming in at 2 p.m. and another one at 5 p.m. So maybe I'll combine all of them in this video. Right now we have <laughs> an Asus 2080 graphics card. Overwhelming number of video cards that we get in every single day. And we tell customers it's a 50-50 chance. And we make customers aware of the repair attempt fee in case it's a no-fix. And it's a 50% chance of the card being fixed. Okay, that's the video card. Let's put it on the side. And we had this one that we opened earlier. It's also a video card. And this one is also the 2080. Yeah, this one is the RTX 2080. Put it on the side. And what was this one? This one is an Asus laptop that does not display anything on the screen. Okay, let's put it on the side. Those packages, they need to be entered in the system. And we have yet another video card here. And this one is the GTX 1070. And customer wrote, card stopped working. So on and so forth. The good thing is none of those cards are expedited, so we can take our time to figure out the problem. And let's open this one here. I did not open it yet. Oh, this is just envelopes from the post office. We go through these a lot. And we have a package here that looks half opened. I did not open this. It came like this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> it's an MSI card. And I do not see paper inside the video card. We're going to have to look at the customer's name. I think uh, UPS just came in. And we have this envelope. Yeah, we have more packages coming in. Thank you. Yeah. Looks like we have a fob here. Bensky fob. Does not lock the vehicle. And this one is a 2018 Mercedes van, cargo van. Okay, so this is a fob for a cargo van. I have not worked on the fobs for cargo vans, but we're going to have to see what's going on. Let me grab those two packages that just came in. And we still have another mailman that will show up around 5 p.m. FedEx, UPS, and the post office. And don't tell me this is a video card. Don't tell me this is a video card. And yes, it's a video card. This one is the 980 Ti. Okay, 980 Ti. We have more graphics card in the shop than Amazon. And let's open up this package. <laughs> and this one is iPad Pro 2015, model A1584. And what's wrong with this one? Shuts down after a few minutes, then powers back up. Okay, shuts down every few minutes and then powers back up. 
we're gonna have to see what's going on with this one is this expedited and no okay good okay oh the mailman brought us more packages three and i think he went outside to get more GTX 1080 Ti. Great. More video cards. <laughs> More video cards. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, looks like an iPad. iPad mini. And what's wrong with this one? The touch is not functional. So it's a digitizer connector problem, iPad mini. And last box for the day. iPad. But I do not see any papers inside the package and no idea who this iPad is coming from. We're gonna have to look at the box, read the name, and try to figure out who this iPad belongs to. All right, in this video, we're gonna be working on the Xbox One S that came in for no power. We already disassembled the board and there's absolutely no signs of power with this board. The first thing I wanna do is quick physical inspection on the board to see if there's anything obvious and then we'll take it from there. A lot of times we can find out where the fault is coming from by just doing physical inspection. And other times everything looks clean, mint, no issues. And we'll have to do measurements. But before we start with measurements, we're gonna do a quick physical inspection on the board. I'm moving rather quick. I'm just looking for possibly burn marks, signs of liquid, signs of corrosion, discoloration, missing components. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We do see some discoloration on the capacitors but that doesn't really mean that the capacitors are bad since we have what looks like maybe corrosion actually this whole this whole end is gone look at this it should look something like this but it's gone so it looks like we may have a problem on this side of the board and this one too look at this I do not know if our MOSFETs are still good or not. And this resistor does not look too good either. Before we do any measurements, let's continue with physical inspection and see if there's anything else. Right now, there's nothing on the side of the board except for this area here, which we're going to come back to. Where is it? Right here. Let's flip the board and see if there's anything obvious on back of the board. I honestly do not know what this is, but it shouldn't raise any concerns. There are no components on this side of the board. I mean, the back is not crowded like the front. Just some tiny components here and there. Mostly capacitors. All right, so now as far as I can tell, the only problem that we have is this side of the board. This right here.
Okay. Looks like we have a problem with this capacitor. We have a problem with this capacitor. This resistor does not look good. We can take diode measurements on this chip here and see if it does good. We can take diode measurements here, here, and make sure those are good. So let's start by measuring the resistor, meter in resistance mode. And this resistor should read 2.2 ohms. And look at that, it's reading 99 kilo ohms. Not 2.2 ohms, 99 kilo ohms. That's 9,900 ohms. Resistor is bad. That alone can cause a problem. What if we test capacitors in diode mode? I do not see a short here, no short here, and no short here. We do not have a short on any one of the caps, but I'm still going to replace those caps because they do not look good. And now we're going to test the MOSFETs in diode mode just to make sure that they are good and no short. If we test a neighboring MOSFET just to get an idea. This one here is the neighboring MOSFET. Okay. 0 0.6. Okay, so short, short, 0 0.6. What about the one next to it? 0 0.4. And our gate. 0 0.6 and ground. Okay, let's go back here. 0 0.6, good. Ground and 0 0.47. So this one is good. And what about this one? We should be getting 0 0.6 at the gate. 0 0.63, that's good. And ground here. So this MOSFET is good. What about this one here? 0 0.65, ground, ground, 0 0.63, 0 0.6, 0 0.58, 0 0.55, 0 0.59. Zero point five five, zero point five five, zero point five seven. Ground. Okay, so all the chips are good. I do not see a reason to replace those two caps. We're going to replace one, two, three. I did not test this one here. Let me go ahead and test this resistor. Meter in ohms mode. This one should read. This one should read 2.2 .2 ohms. Uh, how much are we getting? 126 ohms. So it has to go. We're going to be changing one, two, three, four. Hopefully by replacing those components, the Xbox will function again. I mean, it's obvious that we have a problem on this side of the board, especially with the resistors. Let's prep those pads, pre-apply solder. Uh, very nice. Now we're going to grab a donor board, a donor Xbox board. 
This one is not the same. This is the 1X. And this one is the 1X. Let me quickly grab a 1S and I'll be back. And I have the 1S here with the X marking on it. That CPU. And we're going to extract those components from this board. Okay, so we can start with this one. We're going to remove the donor board and go back here. And this resistor goes here. I do not think we need our hot tweezers anymore because this is leaded solder and it only takes a little bit of heat to actually reflow that component down in place. Right. All right, so that's component number one. Let's grab component number two. And look at this, it looks like we use that chip from here. We're gonna grab this component. And we're gonna put it right here. Now we're gonna grab this component, the capacitor. So what else do we have? This one here. And I'm honestly debating whether I should change this one or not. It does look good. Why not? Why not? Let's go ahead and change it. And this one too. I'm just feeling very generous today, so why not? Those caps are big enough, I can place them on my bench and not lose them. So I desoldered both of them. Okay, great. Now let's just push down. Same thing here, push down. Right, and just one last time with the hot air. Okay, so that's the area that we worked on. We're gonna reassemble the board and I'll be back. And let's see if it's gonna power on. Okay, so I'm back here. The board did not power on. The board unfortunately did not power on. Still the same problem. 
what I want to do is inspect those capacitors that we transferred over. Maybe those caps are bad to begin with from the donor board. I do not have a reason to believe that they may not be good, but we're going to have to check anyway just to make sure. This one is good. It's not shorting to ground. This one is good. And the uh, big ones here. This is ground. And oh, look at this. Short. We have a short here. And I do not know if this short is because of the caps that we changed or because of something else. Is it possible that this MOSFET is also bad? But I did check the diet reading. Let me check the diet reading of this neighboring MOSFET here. We have a ground. Oh, we have a short here now too. Before we did not have a short here. And now we do. It's very possible that one of those two caps or both of them are what's actually causing the short. Because before, I compared the diode reading of this MOSFET to this one here. And on this one, we were not getting a short on the gate. Now we are. So it's very possible that any one of those two caps or maybe both caps are actually bad. Wow. Let me start by removing one of them and see if we still have a short. Apply just a little bit of flux. We suddenly have a short on the gate on the other MOSFET now. So when something like this happens, we have to go back and check what we did. Okay, so let's put it here. Just for the time being. And check to see if we still have a short. And we do. Let's remove the other one. And let's see if we have a short. I mean, I would be surprised if one of those caps caused a short because I never seen that happen. And we have a short. So what's causing a short now? What is causing the short now? We worked only in this area and nowhere else. So what did we do here that now is causing a short here? I do not know what happened. We did not have a short here before. And now we do. Resistance is good here. Resistance is good here. Meter in diet mode. No short. No short. I mean, we do see an exposed copper on this side. But that was there before. And we did not have a short. Is it possible that the customer's power supply is bad and it caused some type of damage? I do not know. We do not have a short here. If we test the gate here, we do not have a short. If we test the gate here, we do have a short. And if we test the gate here, 
we do not have a short. So it's very possible that this chip is bad. This MOSFET. I'm going to put this one back so we do not lose it. And we're going to take the other one out. And see what happens. So this one is back in place. And now we're going to go ahead and remove this one. I'm very sure that I tested this one before and it was not given a short. So now it is. And the short is gone. So the MOSFET is back. Wow. Wow. Let's get rid of it. And we're going to grab our donor board again. But before I remove it from the donor board, I'm going to test it. I'm going to test and make sure that we are getting a good component. Meter in diode mode. And we're going to check the gate right here. And this is good. I think now we should be good. Okay, so let's try again. We're going to plug the power supply and the power button and see what happens we just want this console to power on i just want to make sure that it's powering on now and then we can later reassemble and test and make sure everything is working we do not really need to plug the hard drive just the power supply and the button Okay, and again, it did not work. I do not know what the problem is. Let me just test the MOSFETs again. Maybe that power supply is causing issues every time it's plugged in. I want to test and make sure that those MOSFETs are still testing good. Now we have short again. The same MOSFET that we just replaced is short into ground now. It's very possible that the power supply is causing the problem. Look at this. I mean, we just changed this. We just replaced this MOSFET. I think there's a problem with the power supply. When the power supply is plugged in, it's blowing out or shorting out this MOSFET. Let me test the third one here. And the third one is good. The third MOSFET is good. The middle one is shorting out. Look at this. I'm going to go ahead and replace that MOSFET again. But this time we're not going to use the same power supply. We're going to grab another power supply. Let's make sure this one is good before we remove it. So we're going to use 
this one here. Do we have a short at the gate? And no, we do not. Okay, so let's try this one more time, but this time we're gonna use another Xbox power supply and not the same one, and we'll see. Okay, so Big Boss is grabbing the power supply from a donor Xbox that we have. And this is the board. If that MOSFET blows again, or shorts again, that's a problem. Same problem, nothing. Nothing. So the problem is not the power supply, but there's something else. Okay, so no power still. I wanna check on that MOSFET that we had to replace twice. Is it shortened to ground now? Again? And look at that. MOSFET went bad again. What is causing this MOSFET to go bad? As soon as power is plugged in, it goes bad. Look at what I discovered. This resistor should read 2.2 ohms Okay, it's reading. <laughs> At one moment, it went up to 100 ohms. It's 2.2 ohms, it's correct. What about this one here? 2.7 ohms. And if we measure this MOSFET, the other one, okay. Gate, I'm just trying to narrow it down. I'm looking at the 7403 MOSFET and I want to make sure the reading is good. This one is shortened to ground. It should be reading 0 0.5 diode mode, but we got a short. Short to ground. Look at this. This reading is good, 2.4. This reading is 0 0.5, but we have a shorter ground here. So is it possible that this MOSFET is bad or there's a capacitor, one of those two caps are shortened to ground? Very possible. Why don't we desolder this MOSFET and see if we still have a shorter ground on this trace? We should read 0 0.5 when testing in diode mode. Right now, we are reading ground short on this side it's either this chip or any one of those two caps i believe and let's see do we still have a short and we do so the problem is not the mosfet and right now let's remove this cap Okay, we still have a short. And finally, I want to remove this cap here. Fume extractor on. Do we still have a short? And we do. This MOSFET is blown again. The MOSFET is blown again, or shorted to ground again, not blown. Blown, it shows OL. Blown in the sense that it's not working anymore. If we replace this MOSFET, it's fine. 
as soon as we plug power, it goes bad. Same here. I took this one out to see if the short is caused by this, this, or this, and these are not the cause of the short. I put them back on. I did not clean yet. Because, honestly, I had to leave this board yesterday. And I'm continuing with the repair today. I'm wearing the same red shirt, so I do not appear in two different shirts in the same video. Okay, so we no longer have a short here after I took this MOSFET off, this one here. When the MOSFET was on, gate is shortened to ground, and this one shorted to ground as well. But now we do not have a short anymore. We do not have a short anymore. Look at this. So how do you explain this? You know what, I think I'm gonna plug it in like this and then maybe we can monitor the board under a thermal cam and see if we see anything obvious because right now I do not know what is causing that MOSFET to go bad. So let's go ahead and try it. And I have my thermal cam here, but I wanna see if it powers on without that MOSFET. Look at that. It powered on and back off. Powered on and back off. Okay, let's check under the thermal cam. Okay, can you power it on? I want to focus on the CPU. Do it. Look at this. What was that? Look at this. I'm almost 99% sure the problem yeah. is the CPU. Can you power it on again? Mm -hmm. Let me look at the whole board. Okay. Yeah, I, I think Do it again. Okay, put your hand on the second one. Yeah. Okay. So it's coming from this coil. Okay, so this one is getting hot as well as the CPU. I brought the Xbox here along with the power supply and the buttons so we can test and look at the thermal cam in a much clearer image. Okay, so now it's powering off in a split second and it's not showing us that other part that is getting hot. Okay, it doesn't want to power on anymore. Yeah, I cannot replicate that anymore. It's turning off after a split second. So nothing is getting hot. Before, when I was with Big Boss, the CPU would get hot for a while and then shut back off. And we saw another component that was getting hot also, which is this one here. Let's take a look at this component and see. This one right here. I mean, I do see a slight burn mark on this MOSFET. So I'm gonna test those two ICs on a donor board and see what readings we get. It does look slightly burnt. But that doesn't always mean that the MOSFET is bad. Meter in diet mode. And let's test the gate here. And the gate is testing good. 0 0.48 voltage drop. What about this? Oh, look at this. We have a short at the gate. So this MOSFET may be what's bad. I'm gonna remove it and see if we still have a short. I mean, it would have been hard to know to look into this area if it wasn't for the thermal cam. But the thermal camera pointed us to this area here. We did some measurements and we found out that we have a short 
at this MOSFET here. And the shoulder is gone. Look at that. <laughs> the shoulder is gone. So that's it. That has to be it. That has to be it. No way. So we're going to apply just a tiny bit here. I mean a lot. Okay. We're going to grab a donor board and we're going to test that specific MOSFET and make sure that it's good. But it looks like I already took that MOSFET out from here doing another repair. I took both of them out. 4C50, let's see if we can find another one that is the same. Right there, right there. We can use this one, 4C50. Let's go under the microscope, so you have a better view. Right, and we're gonna solder one more MOSFET and try it. But first, let me test and make sure that we do not have a short here. And we do not have a short. Very nice. And let's re-solder this MOSFET. I need to grab one from the donor board and I think I only have one left here. We already used three of them and I only have one left. Get rid of the glare, just like that. Alright, so what do you think? Is it gonna work? Is it going to work? That's the question. Let's plug power and see. Is it going to work? No. I mean, right now, I do not want to even check if that MOSFET is blown. It's shot into ground because I got tired changing that MOSFET. Power on. Something is initiating power from here. Let's try it one more time. See? And that's about it. I do not see anything else on the board. Getting warm when I press the power button except for this area. And also this area here. Okay, so let's take a look at those two components quick. I mean, I tell myself I do not want to spend any more time working on it, and I keep being dragged. This one here, what's this? Let me just quickly check on this MOSFET again, just to see if it's still good or not. And luckily, the MOSFET is good now. Even after we plugged power, the MOSFET did not short to ground anymore. So it must have been that other component that we changed that was causing this one to go bad. 
Let me check on this other MOSFET that we also changed. Make sure it's not short into ground. And now this one has gone bad. This one has gone bad. You know what I can do as a last attempt? We're going to replace this MOSFET and we're going to replace the PMIC chip. And that's it. We're going to call it off. Okay, so I just grabbed another donor board so we can extract parts from because that one I'm running out of donor components. We're going to replace that MOSFET, that blue again, the last one that we changed. Okay, and let's go ahead and replace the PMIC chip. And that will be the last thing that I will be doing for this board. If it doesn't work, it's going back to the customer. Pin number one is on the bottom. You know what? Let's grab that chip from a donor board first. D for donor. That's the worst D I've ever seen. But what can you do? Right, so the chip is soldered on perfectly. Very nice. And we can leave those tennis balls on that chip. That's not a problem. Or maybe we can just desolder like that. Nice and easy. Now we're gonna find out if that solved our problem or not. And if the customer is gonna get a working console or not. Power supply plugged in. Power board plugged in. And all we have to do is test. Uh, what do you think? What do you think? Same problem. Same problem. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna call it off for this console. At least you got to see what went on, what went behind the scenes when trying to figure out the problem with this console. We cannot spend the whole day working on one console. Uh, I actually spent two days, not only one day. I worked on this yesterday and I continued today. We did not leave any component on flipped and right now we're just going to call it off and mail this back to the customer and you can see why we charge the customer a repair attempt fee 
I did not only spend one day on this, but I spent two days. I worked on it yesterday. It was late in the evening. I left it alone and I came back this morning. I did what we did today and the console is still no fix. Is this board fixable? Maybe. If I want to invest more time working on this board, maybe we can figure out what's going on with this console. Or if the problem is coming from the CPU, then the console will be deemed a no fix as well. Right now, we're not going to spend any more time working on this. Uh, I ran out of options. We got invoice the customer for the repair attempt, shipping, and mail this back to him. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.